Hey guys, Shane Simmons here. And every now and then on the Appalachian Project, we'll have a post that resurfaces years later for no apparent reason. And that's the case with the story of John Douglas Wayside. It, I think we did that back in 2014. So here's some seven years later, it's popped up and recircled and got maybe, uh, shoot, several hundred likes here just in the last few days. So I thought, well, this would be a good time to put it all together because that post was just a picture. Then I did a video about it that I don't think I ever even shared on tap for some reason. I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, I thought, well, I'll put the story, video, and picture all together here in one little smooth uh, operation. And that way, you'll have all the information about John Douglas Wayside any human could ever possibly want. <laughs> and uh, going, getting back to John Douglas Wayside, it is, um, if you've ever been through there, it is a notorious speed trap. I'm telling you, that's the first thing you think when you're going down the, the hill, the downside of it is. I better tap the brakes here. I, we just never know. And uh, I don't know how many times I've seen people pulled over there and getting a ticket, which one of the few places I haven't ever got a speeding ticket in all, and as, as many as I've gotten. I'm notorious for speeding tickets and flat tires, and somehow I've avoided that place, which I just jinxed myself. But the uh, John Douglas Wayside is known for that, and a few years ago it had some other nefarious activity that we won't get into here. Um, look that up on your own time. I'm not going to get into that mess right now, but the real story of John Douglas Wayside is John Douglas, who I thought was probably some local politician or somebody new, he actually was a scout at the old Black's Fort, which is now Abingdon. And he and a fellow named William Benham, Benham went to warn people, residents of the clinch settlement of an Indian attack. And this was in July of 1776, if my math is correct. No, could have been July 4th, I guess. But they stopped along the way to eat lunch on a flat rock near that site, and which is now where John Douglas Wayside is, and a shot came out of the mountains and Douglas was killed. And the shooter was never found, but at the time he was presumed to be a warrior from the notorious Indian raider from, from the Cherokee Indian tribe, uh, Chief Dragon Canoe, and um, never proven, and he is suspected a lot of things he actually didn't do, but it's certainly possible, and uh, because it was apparently Indian related. So John Douglas was killed, and the John Douglas Wayside is named in his honor. And I know I've drove the I've driven past that a million times before I knew that story. So I thought I'd share that with everybody. And uh, I love the memories. If people could comment some that you've had, because it used to take up a lot more of the road, and people would stop there for picnics and whatnot after church, and even groups would go there to to play in the in the way at the wayside. And uh, obviously that doesn't happen anymore because it's just it's part of a four lane. And as you can see in the video, there's just not any room for anything like that right now. But back in the day, it used to be a good place to stop and truly was a hotbed of activity. And another notorious thing about it was at one point there was a snake pit there. Not a, this was a commercial snake pit. Somebody would charge you a little bit of money and you'd go over there and look in this pit. And I got to be one of the youngest people to remember that because it was gone very shortly after I saw it. I only saw it one time in my life. And we stopped there and man, you talk about spooky, <laughs> which I'm afraid of snakes. Uh, and probably because of that, there's a dispute between me and my brother of who one of us put our finger in. It had to look like chicken wire fence on the top of it. It was the flimsiest thing you ever saw in your life. It looked like, I mean, made Jurassic Park look like uh, Fort Knox. But I just put my finger in there and got stuck in that fence, fencing. It was tiny and I had little bitty fingers back then as a little kid and got stuck and was trying to get it out. And, you know, and if you've ever seen a snake pit like that, those snakes would crawl up the side of that thing, um, shimmy right up there like it wasn't nothing. So, you know, there were several in the range so it terrified me and i don't like snakes to this day i don't care garter snake i don't care i don't like them the only good snake to me is a dead one and i'm sure you'll hate me for that but that's fine i uh we all hate something and i just don't like snakes uh but anyway here's the uh, video and i hope you enjoy at least taking a look at john douglas wayside hopefully one day i'll get to go back and get a shot of the rock and where there's a little plaque on it. And I don't think I got it in this video, but there's a little, and it's not something to get excited about anyway, but it's there. There's a plaque on top of the rock where he apparently was shot. And it's just a little bit, just uh, right up the road from where the John Douglas Wayside is. And you can see it pretty clearly this time of year, but when the uh, trees come back and the leaves come back and all that stuff, it, it's a little bit harder to see. But anyway, I'll let you get back to the video. All right, Shane Simmons, the Appalachian Project, and this is a little post I've been wanting to do for quite a while and just hadn't had an opportunity yet or hadn't made time to do it really. Uh, it is a post on a place that's very notorious in this area, the John Douglas Wayside. I don't think anybody who in Southwest Virginia who's gone to Abingdon, at least from the coal fields, hasn't 
isn't somewhat familiar with that. And I'll tell you a little bit about the backstory on it. There is a rock here somewhere. Um, it may be this one upon the hill because you can't see it except in the uh, winter when all the overgrowth is gone. But anyway, it tells the story of John Douglas, which I'm about to do here momentarily. Uh, and I'll do that as soon as I'm going to talk a little bit about this little building right here. This is a pretty well known and well remembered also in the area. At one time it was a jewelry store and they had a pink Cadillac that used to sit out here with a mannequin dressed like Elvis Presley. And it said, uh, there was a sign that said, Honk if you love Elvis, which is kind of a pretty cute little thing that they had. And it was just a landmark for years. And actually a guy I went to school with allegedly swiped that mannequin and took it for a joyride one day. He brought it back in one piece, thankfully, but I'm sure that was uh, quite a sight to uh, to see Elvis Presley run around town, or a mannequin would be even more weird. But here we are at the John Douglas Wayside, and I'm trying to get out of my car best I can. It's cold and windy, and it's not the best time to come here. As you can see, this is more like what it looks like uh, as you drive down the road. It used to be a pretty popular place to stay from what I hear. A lot of people used to stop by here, but it was before the four lane came in. The four lane took a lot of the um, land away, so it's not really all that safe, really, if you have young children and uh, have trouble keeping up with them. You know, it's a very short walk to the road, and this is some fast moving traffic down through here. Something else I'll talk about here in a minute. But I'll walk down through here and give you a little look. Pretty good little scenery down through here. Got the water running through here and the old shelter for picnics and that type of thing. Unfortunately, here lately it's more known for nefarious uh, romantic encounters, rendezvous, whatever politically correct thing I can call it. But getting back to John Douglas. I used to think that he was uh, must have been a local politician or something, or somebody in the military, but really, he dates back all the way to 1776. John Douglas was a scout for Black's Fort, which is now Abingdon, and uh, he was sent to warn the Cumberland Settlement people of uh, a possible Indian attack. So he went with a guy named William Benham, they traveled to their settlement and delivered the news, and they came back here. And they sat on that rock to have lunch. And all of a sudden, out of uh, nowhere, a shot rang out. And John Douglas was shot dead. So he gave his life trying to warn other folks of Indian attacks. And for that, that's what the uh, John Douglas Wayside was named for. I think uh, a lot of, often his last name has two S's on the end too, uh, I think it's been shortened. But anyway, that's the story of John Douglas, John Douglas Wayside. Uh, it's probably most well known for, at this point, a uh, notorious speed trap. I can't tell you how many friends, family, and acquaintances and, that I've known that's gotten a speeding ticket going down through here. So you're a very good place to hit the brakes. And you see a lot of people doing that because right over that hill is where they usually park. Uh, Washington County, Virginia, one of the more notorious places to get a speeding ticket overall anyway. They are blessed with quite a bit of revenue off that, I'm sure. But anyway, I'll wrap this video up, give you guys a shot. If you haven't seen John Douglas Wayside in a while, I'm sure this will bring a lot of memories of home to few people. But it's always been a popular story to talk about, and a lot of people didn't didn't know the story. I certainly didn't. I didn't even think about it. It was almost like when I saw John Douglas Wayside, it was like calling a rock a rock. It's just what it was. I never even really thought about there being any story behind it. But now you know it. So I will move on down the road and try to avoid getting a, yet another ticket. I'm about one way from riding a bicycle. So I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing. 
much, much appreciated and all noticed and I really appreciate it and look forward to more of these types of things in 2019. Have a good day.